In commercial real estate, the discounted cash flow analysis is really at the core of property valuations for the vast majority of real estate investors. But because of how real estate deals are typically financed, especially by major private equity firms, the way this is applied in practice isn't all that straightforward, and especially since this is one of the most common technical topics that sometimes comes up in commercial real estate interviews. In this video, I wanna break down exactly what a discounted cash flow analysis looks like in the context of a real estate deal specifically and how this comes into play when investors value a commercial property. So to step back and start by defining what a discounted cash flow analysis actually is, this involves taking the cash flows that are projected to be generated by a commercial property and then discounting those cash flows using a predetermined discount rate and the amount of time that has elapsed since the initial investment was made. So to start with the projected cash flows portion of this, in the vast majority of cases, commercial real estate investors and investment firms will come up with valuations for properties using an Excel-based financial model that's going to make projections about future property performance and what the cash flows generated by the property are going to be based on assumptions around things like rent growth, vacancy, leasing, operating expenses, and the terms of the debt that's used to finance the deal. And these cash flows are then going to result in distributions to investors that are putting their money to work in real estate with the goal to earn a targeted rate of return. And this is where the discount rate starts to come into play. And the discount rate represents the time-weighted annualized return on capital invested that investors would require to make an investment worthwhile in the first place based primarily on the risk associated with each deal. Now, I have another video on the channel that goes through the process of choosing a discount rate in much more detail, and I'll link that in the description below. But in general, higher levels of risk will usually result in higher required rates of return and ultimately a higher discount rate, and lower levels of risk will usually result in lower required returns and ultimately a lower discount rate, all else being equal. And where these discount rates that investors select start to come into play within the discounted cash flow analysis specifically is that these are applied to the projected future cash flows of a property to determine if an investor is ultimately going to hit the required returns based on the timing and the amounts of projected distributions. And to use an example to illustrate this, let's take a look at a deal where investors would require a 15% annualized time-weighted return on a real estate investment that's planned to be held for five years, projected to generate $100,000 per year in operating cash flow, and is also projected to generate an additional $3 million of net sale proceeds at the end of that five-year period. And to run a DCF analysis on this deal, given this information, what we need to do is take each of these cash flows in each year of the projected hold period and then discount these values at that 15% rate based on the amount of time that's passed since the start of the analysis. And the way we can calculate this is to take the cash flow generated in each year of the hold period and then divide these amounts by one plus the discount rate and then take this to the power of the number of years that have elapsed since the initial acquisition. So in this case, in year one, we need to take that $100,000 amount divided by, in parentheses, one plus 15%, and then we need to take that to the power of one to get a little over $86,000 in this year. But to calculate this in year two, we then need to factor in that two years have elapsed. So dividing that same $100,000 value by this time, one plus 15% to the power of two which gets us just a little over $75,000 in this period. And as you can see in these numbers, this $100,000 amount continues to be discounted even further in years three and four of our projected hold period as that exponent in the denominator continues to increase ultimately leading to our $3.1 million sum of operating cash flow and net sale proceeds in year five, only accounting for a little over $1.5 million within our DCF analysis. 
Now, once we have these discounted cash flow amounts from here to finish out our DCF analysis, all we need to do is take the sum of these values, or in this case, $1,826,746. And what this tells us is that based on these cash flows, assuming that each of these occur at the end of each year in this case for a full five-year hold period, and our investor requires a time-weighted annualized return of 15% on their capital, that investor could contribute up to $1.826 million dollars of capital into the transaction and still hit their returns based on our projections. However, since that $1.826 million figure represents the upfront equity investment the investor could make in the deal, but doesn't necessarily tell us the actual purchase price we could pay for the property instead of using a discount rate and back solving to an equity investment directly, many investors will use a target IRR in their models instead to come up with valuations and offer prices on deals. And the IRR or internal rate of return represents the discount rate at which the net present value of a set of cash flows is equal to zero, essentially getting us to that same $1.826 million upfront investment, generating a 15% IRR. But because an initial equity investment in a real estate deal is usually going to be based on a mixture of a purchase price, closing costs, and loan proceeds, using a target IRR allows an investor to see their projected returns in a model much more easily and can ultimately guide their offers in a much more direct way. This is why if you open up the models used by some of the biggest investment and development firms in the industry, the IRR is almost always going to be the main focal point and you won't necessarily even see a net present value calculation because that IRR figure is allowing that investor to analyze the same time-weighted annualized returns that the standard DCF analysis would also allow, but in a much more dynamic way that makes it significantly easier to see the impacts of different purchase prices on the property's projected returns overall. So to sum this all up, a discounted cash flow analysis takes a discount rate or essentially the investor's targeted annualized time-weighted return on capital invested and then applies that to each projected cash flow on a deal based on the amount of time that has elapsed since the initial investment was made. And then the sum of these cash flows ultimately represents the initial equity contribution that could be made by investors that would ultimately result in achieving that return. And if you're asked a question during an interview that goes something along the lines of, walk me through a DCF analysis, this is how you can describe this concept in a way that goes a layer deeper than just talking through general formulas and how you can describe the way this is applied in a real estate context specifically. And if you are in the process of preparing for interviews and you want to make sure you're ready for a modeling exam that might be given to you, or you just want to see how all of these things come together within a real estate pro forma, as always, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Break into CRE Academy. A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, and you'll also get access to the break into CRE analyst certification exam, which covers topics like real estate pro forma and development modeling, commercial real estate lease modeling, equity waterfall modeling, and many other real estate financial analysis concepts that will help you prove to employers that you have what it takes to tackle the responsibilities of an analyst or associate at a top real estate firm. And if you like this video and want to see more content on the channel on core real estate finance concepts like this, make sure to hit the like button and let me know. And let me know in the comments any other real estate finance terms that you'd like to see covered in a future video on the channel. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week. And I'll see you in the next video.